I was sick and you knew nothing for me. I was poor and naked and you ignored me. And they said, well, you gotta be kidding me, Jesus. We would never do that for you. We love you. Look at my t-shirt. says, I love Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We would never do something bad to you. And Jesus says what? Whatever you did not do for that beggar around the corner of your house, for that neighbor who doesn't know me, maybe, maybe even those who are materially rich, but do not have a new life in me, whatever you did not do for those poor people that I love, that I died for, you did not do for me. And then he turns to the other group, and he says, come, enjoy all the riches of heaven with me forever and ever and ever. For when I was in prison, you came to visit me. When I was sick, you helped me out. When I was poor and needy, you gave me clothes. You gave me food. And they're like, when was that? I don't remember. Surely I would remember. Surely I would remember. And Jesus says, what? Whatever you did. And I saw, right? What gets repeated three times over and over and over again, each example. What we do in secret, God sees. What we do that no one sees, God sees. And that's all that matters. In Matthew 25, Jesus says, whatever you did for one of the least of these, it didn't look like me, it didn't smell like, like me, he didn't act like me, he wasn't worthy to receive, but when you were kind to one of the least of these, I counted that as being kind enough. Yeah. And when we're kind to the poor, Proverbs 19, verse 17, he who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he, God himself, will reward him for what he has done. What a great promise. What a great promise. When, God, show me. Show me. When can I start a bank account with you? And be kind. Which poor people? Where? How? In what way? God, help me. I, I don't have much. I don't know much. I don't know anything. You lead me. You guide me. I would love to start that bank account of helping people that you lead me to, knowing this promise, banking on this promise that I'm lending to you, and you will reward me. And do it in secret. On the other side, Proverbs 14, verse 31. Take a look at that. He who oppresses the poor. Does anybody care? Especially if we just do it kind of in a subtle way, mostly just ignore them. Don't treat them like they're or equal. Who cares? No one cares, right? I mean, if you oppress someone powerful and rich, you might get in trouble for it. You know, right? But oppressing the poor, no one cares. Right? What are they going to do to you? They can't do anything to you. He who oppresses the poor, what's it say? Shows contempt for the name of God. There's contempt for the names of someone absolutely positively cares. Right? Matthew 25. Jesus just said, You just missed the chance to be kind to me, the one who died for you. The one who loves you more than anybody in this world. You just missed the chance to be kind to me. He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, the one who made you and me, the one who loves us so much, the one who died for us, the one who's given us so much. He also loves this person. He also died for this person. And we don't know all the circumstances as to why they're poor, why, why we're not, why they maybe don't know yet know Jesus, why we do. We don't know all that. But we do know that God calls us to see that person the same way he sees them. And to not say, hey, guess what, buddy? Unlucky for you, I don't have to be concerned about you because you can't do anything about it. But instead, I absolutely have to. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know that God loves you and I know that God wants to love you through me. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't know what, but I sure do hope God leads me. And I do, I'm sure hope because I'm an authentic Christian, you will be blessed. And he will be blessed and she will be blessed. This world is dying to know if Christianity is authentic at all or if we're just all playing our little games. Right? God calls us to give, give, give. Give is people who have received, right? Uh, Matthew Jesus even says, "Give freely." Uh, <coughs> excuse me, freely you have received, freely give. Mm -hmm. Look at the next 
paragraph in Matthew chapter 6, and we'll get back there. And we go from giving to the poor to prayer. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. What is prayer? What is prayer? Is that a religious thing? I think I shared last night that just before I preached last time, I was on a plane and I asked Muslims, I said, what is the most, what is your faith, your religion all about? What is the most important thing about Islam? You know, what, is it Muhammad? Is it, what is the top one of them? Said so the Muhammad's the most important. Uh, the most important, what do they say? And remember from last time, the most important is prayer. We have to pray five times a day. If you claim to be a Muslim and you're not praying five times a day, there's really nothing to your Muslim faith. That's the key of it. That's the key of it. Humbling yourself, making it a priority, getting to know your God, allowing God to work in your life. That's the key, they say. And so I want to ask us, what is prayer for us? What is prayer? We don't have that requirement. Right? We don't have to pray five times a day. I, uh, I probably don't have five times of concentrated prayer time that I give to God. What is prayer? Prayer is us getting to know Almighty God, us communicating with Amen. Almighty God. Almighty God. And what a shame that the people that are the leaders of the religion here could be known as saying prayer is meant to be a show. Prayer is meant to be for others to hear, for others to think highly of me. What a shame. What a shame. And yet that was the norm. That was considered uh, just the way it was at that time. When you pray, go to your room. Verse 6, it says, close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Here it is again. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When no one's looking, God's looking. In other words, there's never a time when no one's looking. God's looking. Who's looking? God. The one who loves us more than anyone else ever will love us. The one who we're going to stand before when we die is our judge. Mm -hmm. It's our judge. Is this real? Is this, has this captured our hearts, these realities? Or do we just talk? Do we just talk that way? The God of the universe sees everything. And it says, pray to me in secret. Get to know me. Pour out your heart to me. And get to know me. Hear from me each and every day. Pray in secret. Something else he takes on here. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. For they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. You don't pray to request. You don't learn how to pray the best prayers. We pray from our heart. Right? There's a great, great example in the scriptures in Luke uh, 18, when a wonderful, in the world's eyes, a wonderful, wonderful person with a great reputation for being a wonderful person, a believer in the best religion that was around at the time. And he prayed and he said, God, I thank you for helping me to be such a great person and to have all these great habits and all these great things in my life. And then someone else who had no clue how to pray, had no clue how to pray, just said what? God has mercy on me. I don't know anything. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I just know one thing. I'm a sinner and I'm coming to you. Have mercy on me, a sinner. And what did God say? God says, I'm not impressed with that impressive sight of God. I'm very impressed with the one crying out to me. Mm -hmm. Cry out to God from your heart. Get to know Almighty God. Let him know who we are. And find out who he is. Get to know him. Pray. Another example in the scriptures that's very strong is the story of Job. Mm -hmm. Have you read Job? Mm -hmm. Who's the good guy in the story? And who's the bad guys. Job is the good guy. The bad guys are his so-called friends. But have you read Job? Look at what his friends say. There's not one bad thing that the friends say. It sounds so great. Job, God is amazing. God's the best.
yes, God's wonderful. God does wonderful things. God's the greatest. God this, God that. Everything they say sounds fantastic. But just not authentic. It sounds fantastic. What does Job say? I don't like you right now, God. You don't seem fair to me. You should just kill me instead of playing with me like this and toying with me. I hate my life right now. I wish I had a better judge to stand before. And what's God say? First he says, Job, you really shouldn't talk like that. Were you there when I created the world? Do you realize who you're talking to? He rebukes Job, and then he says, I love you, Job. I love you, Job, you pass the test. If you cried out to me from your heart, you pass the test. And would you please pray for your friends who I'm about to get real upset with now? <laughs> would you pray with them so I can forgive them for talking these nice, kind words that they don't even know what they're talking about? Job cried from his heart. It sounded terrible at times. And God accepted it. Again, it wasn't perfect. And he let Job know it wasn't perfect. You realize he talked to Job? So then he blessed Job. You need to cry from who we are to Almighty God. And not look for the impressive sounding words. Not look to sound impressive, especially in front of others, but maybe even worse in front of God. God, this is how I think I'm supposed to pray. I learned this at the seminar. This is the kind of perfect prayer that you answer. Right? Don't try to impress God. Share your heart. Share your heart. And we talked about the promises of giving to the poor and the incredible, incredible promises that can completely motivate us to, to uh, give to the poor. How about prayer? How about prayer? What are the promises with prayer? You get prayer right in, everything gets answered. You get prayer right, and you live absolutely supernaturally just like I did when I was on earth. Is anybody actually interested? so much of faith and so much of playing with this and playing with that. Does anybody want the real thing? Jesus has promise after promise after promise. Oh, perfect prayer. May we, may we see God and say, oh God, oh God, how? How? You know, Jack and I were just talking. We have a girl at our campus that is very, very, very needy. We have no idea how to help her. I sure wish I had prayer better with God and could step more into these incredible promises that he gave. And I wish the same for you. I'm sure there's needy people in your life around you. Will you please get prayer right? Can we help each other to get prayer right and to seek out Almighty God in authentic prayer, just crying out to him and believing that he's worthy of us getting this right, his promises, just might be true, and it's so, so, so amazing that it's worth pouring ourselves into. And I don't have time, and I apologize for this because maybe it's the best thing is the Lord's Prayer, but I don't want to take the time to get into that because that can be a whole sermon by itself. I don't want to do that. Wrong, but let's just jump to that last one. When you fast, when you fast, do not much slumber <clears throat> as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces. To show men they are fasting, I tell you the truth. They receive the reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And once again, please, please, please hear this today. Hear this. And your Father who sees what is done in secret, who sees when you give in secret, who sees when you pray in secret, no offense, your heart receives when you fast in secret. He will reward you. He cares. He sees. Can we believe it? Is anybody going to walk out of here and permit that I will get to know Almighty God in a more authentic way? I will be available for Him to give through me. I'm going to pray and get this prayer thing right. Maybe I'll go help Pastor Phil after this so that he can get prayer right, and we can impact this world together. And sometimes, I will what? I will fast. I will fast. I will say, God, you are worth sacrifice.